Hi everyone from India. Very happy to be here again and keep sharing a little bit about asana and the elements of asana. So we already uh, spoke about drishti and breath and, and now comes the banda. And the banda is a very mysterious thing. In, in Ashtanga Yoga I can only speak to you from my experience as a, an Ashtangi, as a female and also as a mother because you know for us women when we give birth <laughs> this is when we realize that the bandas are gone <laughs> and sometimes we need to lose something to actually gain something and it, it's a, the most beautiful experience to be able to give birth to your baby and, and with no anesthesia just completely present in this wave of expansion and, and limited love and some of us have had the, the precious uh, gift to, to go through that experience. And, but I also went through a, a C-section. My last baby was a C-section because my, my left hip was injured so I could not squat. And also uh, going to a C-section is also a way of experiencing what Banda is not. <laughs> and yes, this is the beauty and, and wisdom of life as, as females, as Ashtangis. What are the bandhas and why are they so mysterious and so um, so interesting? You know, once you, you start practicing and, and um, actually bandhas are a very personal experience. Uh, I do recommend one book that I read and then it really just like uh, explained me what the effects of the Mula Banda are and, and this Banda is so important in these times of extreme change and transformation that we're going through. Um, the book is called the Mula Banda, the Master Key, and it's written by one Swami in the Bihar School of Yoga. I do recommend this book. Uh, when I read it, I really understood that yoga was much more than what we can see with the eye. There's so much happening at subtle levels, and, and that's where the real interesting stuff is. So if you can find this book, read it, you will realize, wow, that's, that's why yoga is so fascinating and it never starts like evolving and you know, reinventing itself. So in Ashtanga Yoga we have three bandhas and I'm going to speak uh, basically about the location of the bandha because the experience will come in its own time. If you keep practicing and if you keep reading uh, and you become aware of these uh, areas in your body, you're going to understand there's a connection between them. And very interesting, they are located in the main channel of energy in our body. And the channel is called the Shushumna Nadi. And the first one is located in the base of the Shushumna Nadi. And go down there and find your perineum. Your perineum is the space of flesh between your genitals and your anus. You just feel that space of uh, flesh. And you're going to feel that there's a connection between that energy and your third eye. Yeah, it, it's really cool. Like, when you understand it, like, and sometimes, you know, like, as mothers, when we give birth, they teach us the Kegel exercises. And that's the hypocoxygeal muscle. And you can start doing that exercise as well, so you bring more awareness to all those muscles down there. So Mulabanda is the awareness of that uh, space in your body. It's not tensing that. Because if you tense too much, ultimately you're going to end up doing Ashwini Mudra, which is contracting your anus, and that, that's something different. Mulabanda is just the awareness of this uh, place in our bodies, which is the base of the Shushumna that goes all up here to the crown of the head. What to do with Mula Bandha? Mula Bandha means the root, and it's connected to your first chakra. Your first chakra is the capacity to be happy with this body as it is, and completely accept yourself as you are, and also just be grateful because we're so lucky we have these bodies that are complete and they're alive and they're even healthy and, and sometimes we complain and just you know it, that's too much thinking in my humble opinion Lamanda is connecting to the experience of being incarnated I have
have to say that uh, for many years, uh, even as a child, I was like not happy to be back in this body. <laughs> I was actually very resistant and very sad, and I was just saying, you know, I don't like my body. I I want to go back. <laughs> And slowly, you know, with the practice of yoga, I learned to love myself exactly as I am. And it's been so healing for me. And I know it's been also healing for my mother, my grandmother, and all the women that are uh, behind me. Because as women, we have judged our bodies so harshly for so many years. And there's so much conditioning out there, how we should live. Especially as we age, we need to look a certain way and, and we need to start like, you know, just feeling awkward about ourselves. And I can tell you with yoga, the body becomes a home. It's like homecoming. So don't worry about how you look. The important thing is how you feel inside. And if you feel happy with this body, and Mulavanda really like helps connect us with that uh, Shakti energy, the Kundalini that is actually in the base of the spine. And, and you're gonna be feel beautiful always because just simply because we are alive. So first, uh, banda mula banda, awareness of the perini. The second one you have to go a little higher. It's not exactly in your navel. It's a little below your navel, like two inches below your navel. And that part of your body is gonna come in a little. Not again. You're gonna like be yourself, like holding my body and a banda like this. No. Remember always there should be free breathing. And the Uriana Banda connects to the Mula Banda in the depths of the body. I love this metaphor because it's, it's about being grounded in our bodies, it's about being rooted to this incarnation. And at the same time, the Uriana means the flying Banda. It's about elevating our consciousness, it's about aspiring, aspiring to so much more than the physical needs and the material desires, something that is this transition in our quarantine is really helping us realize. We have been chasing things that are like so uh, superficial. And this is the time to go back to what is really important. Uh, the third banda, Oh, sorry, the second banda has to do with your personal power. It has connected to your Manipura chakra. And of course, yoga is a way of empowering ourselves. It's a way of uh, being who we really are and, and just coming back to, to our own sense of uh, belonging. Not to a system, not to a culture, not to other people's opinion about us, but with ourselves, with our connection with the brand itself. Finally, the Jalandhara Banda is the Banda that is in your throat. And in the Shaga Yoga, we use it in downward facing dog when we bring the chin to the chest. And it's a great way of stimulating all the glands in your head. Par parathyroid, thyroid, your thymus muscle, muscle no, sorry, thymus gland, <laughs> uh, your pineal gland and your pituitary. And it's also connected to this chakra of speaking your truth, of being honest, of uh, using your language with, uh, with care and not like saying or writing anything that is not true. And you see how the first banda, the mula banda is connected to the second one and then it's connected so in your practice, just be aware of these places in your body. You don't need to do anything with it. Just become aware. Just bringing attention there is going to create a whole new dimension in your practice. Where's my friend, the dog? <laughs> Anyways, um, what is this for? This is the opening of your practice to the deeper awareness and consciousness of yoga because remember asana what we can see with the eye is only the surface there's so much in the depths of your being and this comes to you in due time and the um, drishti the breath and the bandha in the asana are the combination 
that uh, make asana a spiritual practice. Because, uh, you know, there's great gymnasts in the world and there's wonderful ballet dancers and, you know, they can do all the postures in our Ashtanga series, but what really makes this practice a spiritual practice is the Tristana, that's how we call it. The breath, the bandha, and the drishti. And then the posture really becomes alive, and the posture really becomes the medicine. And in these times of change, we are all in deep need of medicine. So if you have not started uh, an asana practice yet, this is not the time to do it on your own at home. Just simply listen to the videos or lay down in your bed and close your eyes and breathe. And, um, I don't recommend online teaching because the teacher is not aware of what is happening with the student. Um, but I do recommend finding a teacher once this quarantine is over or going back to your shalas with your teachers and, and regathering. But now uh, is the time to be on our own and, and it's the time to breathe and just become aware of these sacred places in our bodies, these bandhas. The science of yoga is so um, wise, and the science of yoga has 5,000 years in this uh, beautiful India. And the rishis, the creators of this practice, were uh, researchers, and they found so much information about our subtle bodies and the effect and the impact of all these elements in our mind. And that's what we need right now. We need a mind that is calm. We need a mind that is positive, that is optimistic. We need a mind that is also resilient because many of us are going through deep transformation of our businesses, of our jobs, of our families, of our relationships. And that's exactly what this moment is time is for, is to gather your tools, which are whatever you have cultivated in our previous lives, you know, this is life before and after the corona. And if you have not cultivated a spiritual practice yet, this is the time to start. And you can start just by simply closing your eyes and pausing and stop watching so many news that are full of fears and just go deep into your breath and uh, start watching videos online even though I don't recommend you start doing them yet because we cannot help you there physically and personally. Yoga is something to be learned from a teacher that is alive and in the presence of these teachers. And yoga is a transmission of energy that comes from many thousands of years and moves through the teachers, through us, to you. So this is my humble way of sharing the teachers of yoga, but I don't teach us and I'm online and I don't think I'll ever will. Um, I refuse to fall prey to the bombarding of asana online. I, I really think asana is a personal ritual and we learn the asana with our teacher and then we are ready for a personal practice and personal practice is such an important research lab for us. It's not only going to a shala and having all the social interactions, it's also being by ourselves because ultimately we are all by ourselves and if this virus is taking this body, we have to go alone. And asana, as my son Gael used to say in his kindergarten, <laughs> asana is a preparation for death. And the teacher was like, what are you teaching to this kid? <laughs> you know, somehow he figured that out on his own and I don't know how, but he did. <laughs> yeah, asana is a preparation for death. Right now we're experiencing a, a huge death of the old system. Everything is being devastated and I'm so, I'm so uh, in awe of how karma works. And whatever we reap, that is what we sow. So let's, let's plant seeds of awareness in this time of quarantine. Let's plant seeds of love and mutual support and everything will be fine. Thank you so much. So much love from India, from my heart I'm here for your inquiries, for your comments and from your for your questions. Namaste.